don't got some preparation H in this house? I don't know what that is. It's for hemorrhoids. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Movie Reboot Podcast. This is our second week. I am your host, Keegan Holland, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Mike Jennison. How's it going? It's going fine. Uh, my ass away. hurts. <laughs> um, this week, we'll be reviewing Murder on the Orient Express, and our beer of the week is the new Belgium Voodoo Ranger IPA. This is in honor of the main character of the movie, who is a Belgian detective. Have you had this one? I have not. I've had New Belgium before. Not flat really, tire? Not a fan of flat tire. And the one with the corn in, on, on the front label of it? I, I forget really what it's called. I've had, I've had flat tire, did not like it at all. Yeah, so flat tire is not good. Expectations for this one are quite low. It's an IPA. So yes. We got that going for us. 7%. Is Voodoo Ranger like a line of Belgian beers or something? They have like a skeleton line. Is there a bunch of them? There's like three. They're, okay. all, they're all year round though. Oh. I was thinking this was a Halloween beer. We picked it out, but yeah. no, it's year-round. All right. Let's open it. I tease her if we miss. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice hands, feet. <laughs> what a terrible toss. It's right <laughs> your chest. It's at my head. Oh, smells awesome. Those aromas. Yeah, it does smell pretty good. Fruity as hell. I hate IPAs. I know. I know you do. So, we're drinking out of a glass this time instead of the bottle. So that might add uh, to my computer. That might uh, add to the effect. All right, cheers. Cheers. Oh, I like that a lot. It's a fruitier IPA. Yeah, like I said, hate IPAs. Tastes pretty IPA y, but I actually kind of like this. Yeah, it's not the hoppy actually compared to other ones. It, it only has a 50 uh, IBU, so that's kind of low f on the low side for uh, IPAs. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm, actually, I'm actually a fan. And I promise, listeners, I will finish it this time to give a proper review. All right, let's get to the news. Good evening. I'm Will McAvoy. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. Good evening. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in your world tonight. This actually isn't really news, but I was looking for movies that we should review later in the month after Justice League. You know there's a Mary Magdalene movie starring Walking Penis and Rooney Mara? I do. Uh, what the hell? From the guy that did Lion. Yeah, it was supposed to get a December release. It's got pushed Easter. back to, to, e oh, to Easter yeah, now. Yeah, for Easter, yeah, which makes way more sense. Uh, you know they're dating, too. Who? Rooney Mara and uh, Walking Penis. Oh, really? Yeah. Because of that movie? Or no, that? I think they first met on the set of Her. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's not news, but I thought that was interesting. All right, the big news this week, uh, Disney is looking to buy Fox um, for... For monopoly reasons, they can't buy the entire company. Uh, Fox has to keep their local stations, like like the Fox local stations, and some other TV yeah, elements. Yeah, they, they can't own Fox, like Channel 8. You know, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Because yeah. they can't own Fox and ABC. Yeah. Um, um, but other than that, I think it's kind of up for grabs for the rest of it. Um, yeah, so most of the company uh, not willing to sell local stations or Fox Sports because they own ESPN mm -hmm. also. And Fox wants to keep Fox News. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Um, but the movie studios and TV studios are up for grabs. This is, I think, a good thing for a very small reason yep. and a bad thing for the rest of the reasons. I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Ideally, this goes, Disney buys back every Marvel character, and that's it. Because after this, the major movie studios are Disney, Fox, uh, Universal, Paramount, Sony, WB, Columbia, MGM. So there's only eight, roughly, unless I'm forgetting anything. Yeah, as far as major studios go, yeah. I, I heard it was going from six to five. Oh, really? I don't think uh, people consider MGM a major studio anymore. Yeah, that's true. And I think Columbia and Sony might be the same thing. And yeah, I think uh, those two yeah. merged. So only having five major studios instead of six means less things will be made and more things will be made with a Disney filter. Yeah, Disney does what they do very well, very which is well, make yeah. family-friendly movies yeah. that the whole family can go to, that they can uh, sell tons of merchandise mm -hmm. and make uh, theater park attractions. Yeah, and they do it really well, mm -hmm. and, and it's not and it's nice. It serves a nice purpose, and they're doing extremely well. That's that's kind of why Fox is looking to sell. Mm -hmm. But they don't make adult movies right. anymore. They've com completely gone out of that. 
and they still own Touchstone, which was their adult branch, but they haven't made their own movie since. Yeah, you never see that logo anymore. Yeah, they they were distributing for uh, DreamWorks, but that's officially gone. They have nothing on the horizon. Yeah, and Fox Marvel movies were very hit or miss. Um, X Men in particular, but a movie like Deadpool or Logan does not get made by Disney. Not a chance. So it's good that Marvel will be getting all of their characters back. They can introduce them into the MCU and everything. I think that'd be a ton of fun. But everything, I mean, that's already a complaint of the MCU is that everything's the same. Yeah. Ragnarok was kind of a move away from that. But yeah, if you, you bring all these characters in, but it's still the same tone and everything, what's the point? I agree. And all this really does is give it more more legs. Because yeah. I, was, I was thinking after Affinity War, there's really nothing left in the the yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now you bring X-Men and uh, Fantastic Four, they're going to get... Right. Yeah. This will easily go into the next decade, which, yeah. and we'll probably just get more of the same stuff, which mm-hmm. is, in, in my eyes, is getting stale. Yeah. A new movie they're making is a horror movie based in the X-Men universe. So Fox really goes out of their way to make something new and fresh. Yeah, they're being innovative. Uh, what? Logan is a uh, uh, superhero western. Yeah. And Rated it's R. Yeah. Yeah, it, I haven't seen it yet. I, I need to go see it. But yeah. uh, people said it's the best thing, the best superhero movie since uh, Dark Knight. Yeah. And yeah, people. I even saw Oscar projections. People mm-hmm. have in their best film uh, mm-hmm. potential. So. Yeah. And then Deadpool too, which totally right. reinvented the genre as well. Yeah. So you wonder if that can even exist if they were buying it. Well, maybe now that they bought it, Disney would see profit in it. Right. But if Disney owned that five years ago, yeah. knowing hell those get made. Yeah. Uh, and if you ever see a crossover, you'll never see Deadpool the way that we want to see Deadpool. You'll right. see Dead, and I don't think Ryan Reynolds will even let that character get to that point. Yeah, like Deadpool would never fit in with the Avengers. No, especially the, but how the sick would one. it be to see R-rated Deadpool in an Avengers movie? <laughs> uh, and I guess there was a really famous comic book uh, in like the a couple years ago. It was Avengers vs X Men. Oh, uh, they that? they unite pretty often. Yeah, but there was a guy. They, they were like they, they were fighting each other. Oh, I don't know. There's one called Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Oh, just yeah? just kills every single character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be a blast to watch. Yeah. It never get made. Maybe that's how they end the MCU. Deadpool <laughs> just kills everyone. Yeah. That would be the best way to end it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and back to uh, being less competition, Walt Disney uh, had 26% of the market share last year, and Fox was in third place with 13%. So now we're putting over, what, 40% yeah. under the same roof. That's mm-hmm. That's not good. Also, this is terrible at news for indie movies, I think. Yeah. Because Fox Searchlight would fall under uh, oh God, Disney's yeah. umbrella. And Fox Searchlight, I think, is the best indie studio as far as the movies they make and the quantity they make. Yeah. Uh, the last five years, the indie movies that Fox Searchlight came out with, with were 12 Years of Slave, Grand Budapest Hotel, Birdman, Wild, Me Earl, The Dying Girl, Brooklyn, Jackie, Battle of the Sexes. And uh, upcoming movies, Three Billboards Outside of Ebening, Missouri, which we might review in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. The Shape of Water, Del Toro's movie. Super pumped for that. That might actually win Best Picture, I'm hearing. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm super jacked for that. And then Isle of the Dogs, a new Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. I mean... Those are two Best Picture winners there. Those are some of the best movies of the last five years. There's A24 and Fox Searchlight. When you see a movie and the opening contains those logos, you know... They're going to knock it out of the park. Mm-hmm. You know there's always going to be quality behind those. I mean, Disney is a quality studio. I like Disney movies, obviously. Yeah, but they definitely serve their purpose, and I'm not saying they're the devil or anything Yeah, you like need that. way more variety out there, and in Hollywood, things are getting the same. There's sequel fatigue, remakes. Having more studios is definitely beneficial overall. Yeah, and you could say Disney's the driving force behind the sequel fatigue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, just for comparison, Disney bought Lucasfilm uh, it's four years ago now. No, years, 20, no. 60, 2011? Maybe six years ago. Whatever it was. Wild. Bought it for $5 billion. So Fox has got to be like... I heard reports $20 billion. Yeah, that and sounds about right. I, both their stock markets went up when they had, were just talking about their, them being rumored to. Yeah. So apparently Wall Street thinks that this is, a, this is real and we should uh, take note of this. Yeah. Another point I wanted to add about this is... Uh, Back to the uh, indie movie portion, uh, Disney did own Miramax for 15 time, years, yeah. but uh, once Weinstein's left, they just totally dissolved it. So I don't really think indie, uh, Disney really cares about indie movies, because yeah. they don't really make money. It's right. pretty much for the award aspect. Yeah. Ideally, if this does go through, they keep 10, 20th Century Fox as is, and just focus on adult entertainment. Maybe mm-hmm. they want to get into that, yeah. and keep Fox Searchlight where it's at. That would be the ideal situation. I don't know if that's true. I think maybe we see a t- Titanic remake. <laughs> I think uh, we, we could see a Planet of the Apes uh, 
park in Disney World, which would be cool, but I don't know. And have uh, Andy Serkis there at all times, keep him locked up and chained chain to a wall. Yeah. And uh, which would also, would be another big shame, would be we would lose the uh, 20th Century Fox uh, opening credit. The, right. the title sequence and, that, yeah. and the music. Yeah, even uh, like The Force Awakens was weird not having Fox lead in the Lucas film. It was a the dead silence and then the, yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite. It yeah, just it's, builds. Yeah, and, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it really gets it going. Uh, in other uh, studio news, the Dark Universe is dead. <laughs> If you don't know what the Dark Universe is, uh, you want to explain it? Well, it lasted one movie. Um, the Mummy was the first entry into the Dark Universe cinematic universe. It was supposed to be all the monster movies, uh, like or characters like Frankenstein, the Mummy, uh, Dracula, um, the Invisible Man, like all those kind of old 1940s movies were supposed to somehow fit into a cinematic universe. I don't know how, it but would... the Mummy tanked so badly that they're just scrapping it. You know, a lot of times you hear a bad idea and they sometimes pull it off. Yeah. This one was so bad. Yeah, I think the only people that are mad about this are the three producers that made the moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no one cares. It, it literally made no sense. Those yeah. those movies were, haven't been popular since the 40s. Right. I mean, it was a nice attempt, but it was, it yeah. was never going to gain steam and yeah. it was an ultimately, ultimately the right decision. Uh, what, they even had Cass... Um, Javier Bardem was supposed to be Wolfman. Johnny Depp was supposed to be the Invisible Man. Angelina Jolie was the Bride of Frankenstein, which I think started production, but has since been canned. And and then Tom Cruise was in The Mummy. Oh, and also, um, Beautiful Mind. Oh, uh, Russell, Russell Crowe Crow was uh, Dr. Jekyll. So this just was a trip out of the starting gate and then... Never what production really got company was behind it? Universal. Universal. And they, yeah. they decided to... Uh, yeah, definitely for the best. Uh, I think so. Uh, I can't imagine any of those would have been any good. Mummy got panned review-wise, too, right? Oh, got and killed, yeah. Nothing. I mean, if Tom Cruise can't carry a, uh, the title movie, the, you know, the first... That was yeah. the Iron Man, you know? Right, right. And, and when Tom Cruise can't get people there, it's there was nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. Mike? Yes? The Rock is joining the sequel to an Academy Award-winning movie from last year. Um, what could even be? Uh, oh, what, what? Suicide Squad, you <laughs> idiot! <laughs> yes. Yeah, you... I couldn't even think of one. Uh, <laughs> As we talked about last week, uh, I guess Utopia maybe would have been a good yeah. <laughs> The Rock is playing Black Adam in the uh, DCEU. How about us foreshadowing that news? I know. Good on us. And uh, instead of getting his own movie, uh, it seems like he'll be joining... Suicide Squad 2 as the villain. Suicide Squad 1 did super well financially, but like most DCEU movies got panned. Uh, did you? You saw it in theaters, right? I did not see Suicide Squad. You haven't seen it yet, still? No. I was really excited to see it. Saw the reviews. I heard everyone saying just basically don't go see yeah. it. I, heard, heard, I was really excited for Jared Leto's uh, Joker, and mm -hmm. he was only in six minutes. Yeah, and he's bad. And he's bad. He's really and bad. And I assume he's not back for the sequel, right? Unconfirmed yet. Unconfirmed. Um, I, I, I doubt it at he this was point. He pissed. Yeah, he's not very good. The movie has about 12 movies smushed into one. It's all over the place. It makes no sense. And there's just blasting rap music yeah, in the background, yeah. right? Yeah. It's two hours of pop songs. Um, the worst villain I think I've ever seen. People call The Rock a franchise Viagra. He saved Fast and the Furious. He, I guess he made a good G.I. Joe movie, supposedly. But... I don't think he can save Suicide Squad. I don't think Baywatch did very good either. Oh, Baywatch got killed. And they yeah. were trying. To, yeah. Um, no, San Andreas did well. Yeah. He did no, well. he he saw in those like the Get Hard or whatever whatever uh, Kev, whatever Kevin Hart movie he did did financially well. Oh yeah, um, Central Intelligence. Central Intelligence. Yeah. But he's always a big box office pull. The Rock's not gonna get people there. It's gonna be well. People will probably still go see it because yeah. the first one did well, but it's gotta be good if you really want people there. Right. They have to get their shit together. DC. The problem with that movie was David Ayer pitched it and wrote it as one movie, and then literally the trailers made them change the tone of it. They want to go lighter, right? They want to go lighter. They want to go more pop, like more fun. Because he, I guess, he pitched a grim, a like gritty, pretty brutal movie. But then once the Queen got attached to the trailer and it was and it was edited that way, people wanted something. Different. People wanted Guardians, basically. Yeah, I think it was after how poorly uh, Batman vs Superman were yeah, received, right? That they, didn't help either. Yeah, 
Because I think DC always has been grittier. You know, you got the Nolan trilogy. And yeah. E even uh, Burton's Batman. Oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. It, DC's always just been gritty compared to Marvel, and I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. If it's done well. If Zack Snyder's not behind it. Zack Snyder's not behind it, but he's behind everything, right? I think he's stepping away after the Justice League. After the Justice League. Yeah. Which looks terrible. <sighs> Can't wait for next week. Am I right? <laughs> yeah! More spacey news. The GOAT. <laughs> Christopher Keeps Plummer coming. is replacing Spacey in the already finished All the Money in the World, uh, directed by Ridley Scott, which I just found out. Any idea about this movie at all? I did not hear about it until... This came out? Yesterday. But... I'm intrigued. Yeah. Swift justice <laughs> for Spacey here. Yeah. Um, I guess Spacey was playing like a pretty old guy in the movie and he was just caked in makeup. And he, Christopher Plummer actually is an old man, so maybe this will actually work out for yeah, the best. I heard really Scott's first option was Casey Plummer. Is that his name? Christopher Plummer. Christopher Plummer. Yeah, that, that was actually his first option. The studio said they wanted a bigger name. Oh, wow. Yeah. I looked up Christopher Plummer earlier today. He is a Grammy away from an EGOT. <laughs> Yeah, read, a, read a book. Yep. Two Emmys. <laughs> book on tape. Two Tonys. One Oscar. Get him in on a uh, audio book or something. Get him that Grammy. Barack's got two. Barack Obama. I think he's got two Oscar. I two Academy. I two uh, two Grammys for reading books. On really? Tape. Yeah. <laughs> as a as the president. Uh, be uh, before. Yeah, it has to be before. Yeah. So that's funny. It, it can be done. A lot we, of people on the EGOT list. It's because they have audio books. Yeah, it's pretty much audio books carrying them. Yeah. Yeah, the EGOT list is fun to look at. It is. Uh, the, the EGOT's the uh, Emmy, the Grammy, the Tony, and the Oscar. For you, those of you... Who... Did, you, did a, a weird, you did the egg toe order. <laughs> <laughs> or my favorite, spell like goat, but uh, goat, yeah. but with the E. Uh, yeah. I also, I was, I was looking at uh, Ohio State alumni the other day. <laughs> I don't know why. And someone, I can't think of her name now. I'll actually look this up. Eileen Heckert. Has an Academy Award, Emmy Award, Golden Globe, and a Tony. Needs uh, needed a Grammy to get there. So go Bucks. Go Bucks. Lee Manuel Miranda got robbed. She got from Juana last year. Yeah, I know you should have. But what are you gonna do? Back to Spacey. That that movie's coming out December twenty second still. My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh yeah, no, that is nuts. Because uh, post production usually lasts about six months. And they're going back to shoot, I guess it was only nine days that Space was on set. Okay. Yeah, because he has to be a small Yeah, role. it's a fairly small role, but that's still, i got to get everyone going. Yeah. I, uh, Mark Wahlberg's coming back, Michelle Williams is coming back, and they're still shooting for December 22nd, which must mean, I, I, that's going to be expensive, but... Oh, it, yeah. It's interesting how, f what great lengths they're going to to remove themselves yeah. from uh They could easily space. push this back to next year. Could easily. I guess he must like it. You must want that award season uh, prestige, Ridley Scott? I guess. I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, The Martian. I was going to say, when, when, the, when was the last time Ridley Scott? Oh, yeah. But The Martian. Ridley Scott gets it done. Uh, I guess Th the... This is... Uh, Ridley Scott is 50-50, is I'd say. He makes shit movies and he makes really good, good movies. And yeah. his last movie was uh, Alien Covenant, so this one should be good. Yeah. I feel you can kind of tell from afar if it movies be good or not. Mm -hmm. This one's a little different. He's better sci-fi, obviously. Yeah. This movie's not sci-fi. It's like a oil tycoon drama or something. Oh, it's a remake of There Will Be Blood. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. In other news, uh, the Raid director is in talks to direct the solo Deathstroke movie starring Joe Mangin Manginello. His name's wicked long. So Joe Manginello was cast as Deathstroke when uh, Affleck was still directing and writing The Batman. He tweeted out a picture of Joe doing some test footage. So, but they, they hung on to him, even though they, they got rid of Affleck as the writer and director. But yeah, it'll be his own solo movie. Have you seen either Raid movie? They're considered, like, the best action movies of the last, like, decade. It's all, like, one shot, like, actual martial artists just going at it. And I guess they're, I haven't seen them either, but I guess they're, they're amazing. So good that they featured some of the actors in The Force Awakens. You know the scene where, um, Harrison Ford is on the ship and that, and that huge thing's rolling after him? Yeah. The, one of the gangs is, is, like, all the Raid characters. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I don't know why they got them because they don't do any martial arts or anything. They could have got anyone, but I guess that's yeah, a, just a little nod to them. There's a lot of interesting cameos. Yeah, uh, the Death uh, Deathstroke is a really cool character. Um, if anyone's played uh, the Arkham games, he's in Arkham Origins. I think he's the best boss fight in the entire series. It's who Deadpool's based off. Baseball, Deadpool's a rip off of Deathstroke. So similar concept. He can't die. He's kind of 
Well, they added a lot. Like he he doesn't have like a, a mouth like Deadpool. He's not like fourth wall breaking, but his name's oh he looks a lot like him. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, <laughs> his name his name's Slade Wilson. Deadpool's Wade Wilson. Oh really? Deathstroke, Deadpool. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty blatant. Um, it's got so, the knives on the back. Yeah. So this should be or swords. With this guy behind it, I think it should be pretty solid if it ever even gets made. Um, but yeah, hopefully that that works out. I'm actually pretty excited for that. That's a standalone Batman movie. I think it's his own movie. He's in his own movie. Yeah, but he's a Batman villain. He's a Batman. Yeah, he's a he's like a mercenary. So they could make it where he's the good guy in this. But oh, like Deadpool. Cause yeah, Deadpool goes both ways in comics books right. too, right? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So it could work. I wonder if they'll go radar route with it. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Is that beer holding up over there? This beer is actually delicious. I actually really like this beer. I like my IPAs a little fruity. Because you're this, a little fruity. and Because I'm a little fruity, yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this one's got a little hit of, uh, a little, little hit of citrus. I don't, I'm not going to try to tap what fruit it is, but uh, I, I taste it. I think all IPAs taste like grapefruit. I taste grapefruit in this. This, I don't, this is also coming from a memory I had in, like, seventh grade when I drank grapefruit juice. So that could be way off. I think that's what grape, grapefruit tastes like, but... I, yeah, I definitely enjoy this beer, though. Yeah. This is actually very, very good. It was uh, Voodoo, right? Mm. Belgium Voodoo. Yeah. Uh, so I guess this week we'll actually give a review in the podcast and not tag it on at the end. Uh, hey, we're learning. Michaels, are you okay? It's just beer. What kind of beer? Uh, I'd like a keg of beer, please. Hey, Johnny, how about a beer, huh? I'm better when I'm drunk. Would you buy this in a six-pack? For sure. I, I I think I would too. Yeah, this is yeah. this is a really good beer. I'm happy to uh, add another IPA to my uh, rotation of uh, buying beers. Yeah, what percent is this? Seven percent. Holy. Yeah. So definitely put some hair on your nuts, kids. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is extremely good. Yeah, I'm in. I'm it's in smooth. on the Blue Ranger. It is very smooth. Yeah, this is a, this is a fun beer. I'll actually finish this one, and then maybe buy more. <laughs> I might get into a bush out of the fridge. Have you ever seen this on tap or anything? I've never seen this. I've never heard of this. And you see that fucking, you see flat tire everywhere. Yeah, you do. I don't know why. It's not good. It's literally the woat. I want to get your thoughts on one thing, because I know you love this movie. Yep. Blade Runner is gonna is projected to lose $80 million. Yeah, I could, I could see that. That was the biggest gamble, I think, I've ever seen. Yeah, it was by a smaller uh, production company, Alcon Entertainment. Yep. Which Sony and Warner Brothers also. They were the distributors, but they produced it, Al yeah. Entertainment. And they pretty much only stick to like low budget movies. I think their yeah. two most famous movies are Sister of the Traveling Pants movies. Ooh, <laughs> the best. <laughs> so you know what budget they're working at. Yeah. So this was uh they got the rights to this. This was a risk looking for a uh, franchise to build oh. off of. Oh honey, no. <laughs> and they said this was the equivalent of pushing all the chips into the center of the table. Yeah. And, Huge risk. And crossing your fingers. What Blade Runner the original came out in 1983. 83, so 30-plus years. It's a cult movie. Cult, cult movie. Classic. The original did nothing at the box office. Yeah, I mean, great. I, my, my favorite movie of the year. I, I think mean, it's going to be tough for it, for it to get topped at you, this point. You know I'm not even that big of a sci-fi right. guy. And I I freaking love yeah. that movie. It looks incredible. It's incredibly acted. Like Yeah, they got, they got expensive talent. They got expensive director and cinematographer. They went balls to the wall with it. They crushed it. But yeah, th- there was no way this was going to make money, I don't think. I think they were praying to break even. Yeah, they said uh, $400 million would be a success, and 320 is what they needed to break even. It's going to project to make 240 Didn't It didn't do good in China, which was kind of there what they were banking on. Yeah. It kind of just fall apart there. A very hard sci-fi heady movie in China, though. Yeah. I, I get it. It looks cool. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it. It's yeah. a super great movie. It's in theaters probably for another week. Yeah, it's. There's no way it's making over a million dollars currently, is oh. it? What did, what did it make last week? Do you have any idea? Funny you should ask. It made five million dollars last week. Oh really? Which is shockingly high. It's actually, actually. Yeah, way higher than I expected. Yeah, it made a wow. What was the drop from the, the previous? The week? drop was forty five percent. That's good. If I think it's got legs actually, but it's gonna make what probably. Ten million more dollars. Yeah, the the general rule is production budget times, times two. two. Yep. Yeah. So one hundred fifty was the production. The budget, budget was one fifty. I could see marketing even being more than that though. Yeah, they it got, was everywhere. They got them an SNL. They got uh, who? 
Oh, Gosling? Gosling? Yeah, Gosling on SNL, which yeah. I assume cost money. I have no freaking idea. Yeah. And then there was ads everywhere. Oh, okay, you saw it all the time. They did good marketing. Yeah. Uh, I never saw Blade Runner 1 until this movie came out. I uh-huh. wanted to see Blade Runner before I saw this. Yeah. And this movie's way better than Blade Runner 1. One's kind of a slog. I, it looks fantastic, but it, it's it's pretty It boring. looks cool. Nice meaning behind it. Yeah. I think Blade Runner is a similar concept uh, build upon. Yeah. And it looks... It's a great sequel. It looks... Yeah. I don't like... It's hard for me to like think a sequel's superior, far superior to the original, but this one's far superior to the original. Some people would be pissed. Some people would be pissed. And I think maybe because I saw them both the same exact yeah. day, so it wasn't hard for me to I, say... I, Blade I agree. 2049 is, is better. Yeah. I mean, I am a Denis Villeneuve... Fuck boy, he to the he, max. He is currently. I compared him to Coppola in the seventies. Coppola ha- had written Patton, Godfather, Apocalypse Now, Godfather Two. I mean, in the last f- three years, twenty forty nine, Sicario, Arrival. Yeah, He's Arrival like, was my favorite movie that year. Sicario was top five, and twenty forty nine. It's currently number one. I don't know how you make those movies three years in a row. Uh, no idea. Just even making them, yeah. and then let alone them being great. The fact that twenty forty nine doesn't take twelve years to make, like Boyhood, <laughs> makes no sense to me. Wow, this was an unnecessary <laughs> shot at Boyhood. That was absolutely <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the, it had to take forever, though. Yeah, he must have literally walked off a rival set. Yeah. Was was in pre production while he was doing Arrival, yeah. and then did post while he was recording Blade yeah. Runner, and even before those three Prisoners, I guess is awesome. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it yet, yet but I and have. then Seems Enemy, like... which I guess is great too. Yeah. Two Gyllenhaal movies, Jake Gyllenhaal. He, he's a, he's a, he's one of those directors where you have to see everything he makes. Yeah, he's in the top you know ten right now. Right. Even in my, I don't even really enjoy sci fi movies, but yeah, um, yeah he's, well, I do he's like fantastic. Sci fi movies. That's a it's, it's a wrong statement. But yeah. any other news? Well, my brother would kill me if I didn't mention this. Okay. Silverlang's playbook is turning... It's getting a sequel? Oh, <laughs> no! no! <laughs> it's, it's turning five uh, this Thursday, the 16th. Uh, as Keegan jokingly mentioned last podcast, this was the movie that got me interested into movies. It was kind of the aha moment. And uh, it's funny, uh, the first time we... Me and my brother saw the movie. My brother saw it Monday. So you gotta go see this movie. So we saw it Tuesday. Then Wednesday, we're going to go see Lincoln because we're like, oh, let's watch all the uh, Oscar Academy Award winning movies. Projector's broken. The guy walks in. It's 15 minutes. The movie should have started 15 minutes ago. We're like, oh, it must be broken. Guy walks in. He's like, uh, yeah, the, the projector's broken. You guys can see any movie you want, though, right now, you know, for free, or you can get your money back. So we, we, we look at the uh, times. Oh, so I'm like, the book's starting in five minutes. Yeah, let's go see it again. Yeah. Second time was even that even better. <laughs> Walk over Barnes and Nobles, get the book, read the book in oh, two days. I didn't know it was based on the book. Book books stay on the on the shelf right there. Oh you wow! You want to take that home? Well, Maddie, quick! Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna read that book. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And then uh, and then watch the movie again. I think I saw it six times in theaters. Holy crap! Yeah, uh, we went to Philadelphia pretty much just to see the houses and stuff like that. It, it at the uh, diner they eat at. I fucking love this movie. It got me, yeah, it's good. It's it really got me good. hooked. It was the aha moment for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. But yeah. yeah, it's really good. Why that movie? That did Chuck was Chuck a big movie guy before this? Chuck wasn't a big movie guy either. We're both pretty much the same, which is like the why most do you pick this average movie? Average Joe ever. De Niro, Chris Tucker coming back. I, it was it was movie Monday in Manor. So five dollar movie. Him and my sister saw it. I think I think right. Jay, I think Bradley Cooper probably probably saw the Hangover okay. movies. Yeah. He told me to go see it. And I don't know. I think it was the first. It was the first like indie artsy movie I ever saw where I kind of kind of resonated with yeah. me. And I said, Ah, this is what movies can do. This is yeah. why people enjoy them. You know, kind of you know sh- shapes your outlook on life a little bit. You know, makes you think. I'm looking at your shelf here, and I see Never Let Me Go. Have yeah. you read that? I've read it. Fun fact: at trivia on Monday, the five hundred dollar question was. A screenshot from that movie. I had seen the movie. I had read the book. I didn't know the title. But I got it wrong. How's the movie? <laughs> Movie's fine. It's um um who's the woman in? Uh... We'll probably cut all of this by the way. Uh, movie was um God damn Oscar Isaac. Uh, Ma- Maggie Gyllenhaal. No. <laughs> Inside Lewin Davis, the oh, woman. Sorry. Yeah, Maggie Gyllenhaal. No, it's not Maggie Gyllenhaal. Oh fuck, Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mul- yeah, Carrie Mulligan's the main character. Married to Marcus Mumford. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Mumford. I don't know if you, if you'd know that. Yeah, um, sorry. yeah it's Carrie Mulligan and um, Andrew Garfield. Yeah, it's a movie with, came with, out. with some Kira Knightley in there too. Came out twenty ten. Did you like the book? Because the, the book was awesome. 
Book better than the movie, yeah. Did you know the plot twist before you read the book? I kind of saw it coming. I didn't. But uh, did you have to read it in that British literature class? No, I read it for writing in the English major, <laughs> I think. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure why. It's a good book. I think it came out, came out sometime in 2010. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the category in trivia was uh, 2010 movies. Huh. That was the five on though. Was it up in there? No. Toy Story 3? Toy Story 3. Yeah, I got that one too. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie Mulligan narrated by. What, she does the audiobook? Nah, never let you go. It's narrated by her. Uh, <laughs> should I do errors from last week? And then yeah, we'll, you... address, we'll address some errors from uh, last week. Yeah, we errors we did last week. Uh, it, there really wasn't. It was actually a good week for us. Um, good week. It was our first podcast. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you would... Th- in all honesty, this IPA's kind of hit me, too. Okay. Yeah, uh, dude, 7%, man. It, yeah, it's... it's did you ever fun. go to, um... Uh, Who Farted? No. Dude, there's a beer there that single-handedly just put me on my ass. It's, like, pink, too. But... I have been to Who Farted, actually. I take that back. I went with you, right? Did you take no. That? I, it was me and Owen. That went. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, okay. like... One beer, walked out of the way, I was like, oh my god, I know where I am. It was incredible. This is kind of doing that to me. It's kind of doing it. Voodoo I'm, IPA Ranger, or Voodoo Ranger IPA. Let's I'm, go. I'm a huge fan of Voodoo IPA, of this Voodoo Ranger. All right, continue. So the first one, Hateful Eight came out in 2015, not 2014. Such a minor, minor detail. Sminer. Sminer. But I would Small hate for you minor. to uh, get a question wrong at Trivia Night, and because of us, <laughs> over the uh, year. Amazon is also behind the Lord of the Rings uh, TV show series with Warner Brothers. It would be okay. on Amazon, yep. which you were hoping it was going to be on HBO. Amazon works. Amazon's like it's poor man's stepbrother, so th- that works, yeah. Jungle Book and Lion King, I said uh, Jungle Book was a, such a short movie that uh, making a uh, live action's not a big deal. Lion King and Jungle Book are actually both the same amount of time. Are you serious? They're both 89 minutes long, which wow. I, I thought that was ironic. But Are you uh, sure you look up the uh, 2015 movie? <sighs> no, I, no, I'm, I'm probably... Dude, I don't think it's 89 minutes. I double-checked this, and I'm going to triple-check it right now because uh, you're, uh, you got me here. Wow. <laughs> and I was wrong. It's 78 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What the fuck was I looking at? I couldn't tell. I double-checked this. I suck. But 79? Uh, 79 minutes. That's still longer that's, than I thought. That's super short. That's an hour. Hour 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> The Kamari and Azizi, the hyenas. I said that. Yeah, I was wondering if they were new characters. You were right, uh, yeah. but they were called Bonzi and Ed in the original one. Oh. So they changed yeah. the names. Uh, and when I was doing this, I actually had a fun fact that I found. They were originally going to have two hyenas, and they were going to be Cheech and Chong. Are you serious? Which would have made Lion King a whole different kind of movie, especially when they started devouring him at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, just one last thing. Uh... This really wasn't an error, it was just, I couldn't think of what movie I was trying to think of when we were talking about uh, Thor and the director Ty- Taika Waititi. Waititi. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to think of what other movie he did. The movie I was thinking of was What They Do in the Shadows. Which I have seen, so I should have brought that up too. Yeah. Have you seen it yet? I watched it today. Because... It's so good. Yeah, it's my it's one of my best friend's uh, favorite movies. He always told me to go see it. Yeah. And I was always like, it's not that funny. I don't, I don't trust your taste in movies. Yeah, it's hilarious. And it's so fucking funny. Swearwolves. <laughs> Where else not swearwolves? If you enjoy laughing and having a good time, <laughs> you, you should watch this movie. If you have a pulse... You know, I, uh, I had watched that... I took a Slavic vampire class, sophomore year. Yeah. And so we watched that for that class... It actually is really accurate to like old folklore and old like history. Really? So yeah, I, I think I would probably get. This is gonna sound arrogant as hell. I would get more jokes than the average person would because there's really like real deep cut laughs in there. But yeah, even just on, from the outside, funny as hell. Yeah, this movie came out in 2014. It's on Amazon. Uh, yeah, you, you, everyone should go watch it. Yeah. Uh, there were so many funny moments. I know. Uh, who, who the, the 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 one real guy, the one guy that's human, yeah, not yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's their he's their friend. So funny, yeah, so good. Oh man. Yeah, because they they get a main like a famous vampire from each decade. Like Nosferatu, uh, oh, Vlad yeah, the Impaler is yeah. one. I, I forget who Jermaine plays. Jermaine Clement. I only recognize Nosferatu. And then a new one who's kind of like a, the Twilight vampire. Oh yeah, he kept referring to he's yeah. the Twilight vampire. Yeah. Oh, that's actually yeah, hilarious. So they get vampires from each 
like generation of like famous vampires and put them all in the same house, like a frat house almost. It's oh my god. Yeah, it's, so it, it's said it was a mock document, do, mock documentary, mockumentary, mockumentary. Wow, that's yeah, that's a genius word. Yeah, so that, okay. yeah. So it's like The Office, but it's uh, but it's vampires. Yeah, and it's hysterical. Yeah, I need to see his two other movies. Yeah, Harrison oh, saw one of them. Hunt for the Wil- Hunt for the Wilder People, probably the other one. The one Boy? he wrote, maybe the one he wrote. He writes all of them. I think he maybe wrote us. I don't know. He was just, you know, yeah. Tough, just um, he's like, actually he got nominated for an Academy Award for a short film he made. I saw that actually. Yeah, when I was on his Wikipedia page. Oh, Chase four. That? Yeah, it's pretty early. Yeah. yeah. He, and oh, he's oh. I also want to mention that uh, he co-wrote and co-directed that with uh, Jermaine Clement, Jermaine Clement, who is the voice of a. Uh, Tomatoa in Moana, the large yeah. crab. Jermaine Clement pops up in a lot of stuff. He's one of the main characters in Flight of the Concords. I oh, recommend that to you. Flight of the Concords. Uh, Taika Waititi? Taika Waititi. I said that. that. Did I you? Said, yeah, I said he's behind a lot of the best episodes. Oh, that, that's what you're saying. He was talking about a TV show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you should watch uh, Flight. It's so funny. Oh, it's, is it a group? Yeah, it's a, it's a musical group uh, from New Zealand. Oh, because I, I heard... Um, Brett McKenzie won... Best original song for uh, the Muppet movie. Damn. Yeah, and he's in that group, dude. Cr- like, New Zealand has somehow put together the three, these three like funny as hell people at the same time, and yeah. it's pretty awesome. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, <laughs> as I keep looking to see what his name is, YTT. Taika Waititi. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm a fan now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, he's uh, awesome. Yeah, um, he, and he he talked about uh, doing more Marvel movies, and he oh. wants to stick with Thor. Yeah, he says he feels comfortable with that, and it it seemed clear from like behind the scenes photos and like tweets and stuff that him and Hemsworth are, are pretty tight. I've never they have seen that Australian New Zealand connection. Yeah, I've never seen Hemsworth. I I, I always thought he was kind of a douchebag. He was charming as fuck. In he's story. so charming. Yeah, and oh god, he's so hot. He's, he's dude. In, he's insanely hot. He had the obligatory shirt off scene. It doesn't even seem real how big that dude is. I do those those arms. <laughs> <laughs> They're crazy. I know. Uh, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. He makes his brother like a fucking twig. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go head out to see Murder on the Orient Express and we'll let you uh, know what we think. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Ish. I don't know if I am or not. Uh, I had something else. I looked I looked into the, into um, other movies that we could watch instead. <laughs> nothing. I had nothing. This, Lady Bird's on its way. This Florida project seems interesting. Or the, uh, what's it called? God damn it, the beer's getting to me. This, uh, this, ah, fuck. The, the, the Florida project, that's what it's called. It's I don't really, know. It's, it's, it's supposed to be really good. It, oh, I wanted to bring up this point. Just, I'll, have to, I'll have to move things around for this episode, it seems. <laughs> because my train of thought so poorly? Yeah, horrible. Um, pros to the Disney... 20th Century Fox. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, bring it way, way back. Star Wars. The whole Star Wars thing will be under one roof now, too, though. So yeah. You, you Ooh! Could, you can see a Blu-ray box set. There is one. Oh, with The Force Awakens and Everything. I think you would see all nine in the Christmas of 2020. If this I gets wonder done. if... It'll cost, um, it'll cost $340. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Be gazillion. I wonder if we'll finally get the theatrical releases yeah. of the original trilogy. I think we will. In Blu-ray, Disney, you gotta make that money. Oh, dude, that would be I, okay. I actually would probably buy that. The, Not for three forty. The but. price tag that would be so high. There's another thing I actually want to bring up with this too. This is yeah. actually a really good point. So Disney in August, they, we we are all over the place. Yeah. Another point why uh, why Disney wants to do this merger is for a couple reasons. Uh, you know, we already mentioned Star Wars and Marvel. Um, Marvel. Yep. Avatar Land that they're building. Is that Fox? It's done. The Avatar Land's done in yeah. Disney. They were making four more or something like that. It's going to cost a billion dollars. That is Four Fox. more movies, yeah. So now Disney will actually be making those movies, which I, I assume they would want their hands on that if they... I mean, Avatar 2, 3, 4, and 5 are not going to make $2.3 billion. Are you doubting Cameron? Yeah. Dude, those movies have made zero cultural impact on the world. I'm not denying that, but Cameron's Cameron. Cameron is Cameron. It, it, spending a billion dollars on movies something so fucking And doing dumb. four of them? Do one and make sure if it even lands. Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to be okay. He's like inventing like underwater technology to film yeah. scenes and stuff like that. The guy's an absolute freak. He is a freak. 
And I think a lot of the motivation for the movies he makes is the technology he can invent, basically. Yeah, I think he's kind of getting obsessed with that. Especially yeah. with, the, with this Avatar, this Avatar uh, series, but... Yeah. And an, another point is uh, Disney's starting their own streaming service. Yep. In, in, starting uh, January, right? No, 2019. So. You're... Oh, well, everything's coming off Netflix. Everything will be off Netflix. They announced in August everything will be do- go off Netflix by the end of this year. Which I wonder what's going to happen with... Um... The Marvel shows on Netflix. I assume they'll be fine. They gotta be. Yeah, because where else would they go for, for a year? Where would they have? Yeah. Net, uh, Disney's pulling all their stuff off Netflix because they want to become a competitor now with them. And in 2019, they're going to release their streaming service. And I kind of laughed at the idea because Disney's... Oh, their back catalog is better than anyone else in the history of the world's back catalog. You really think... Dude, People will buy that. People... Jacob... Jacob Rossi, my roommate, will be there day who, one. Who we might, who we might get as a special guest in two weeks. Yeah, to he, uh, show his fanhood. He's watched Mulan probably fifteen times in the last month. Yeah, but what would he pay fifteen dollars a month when he could just own it? Yeah, because he's an idiot. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, he would. He I, would. I think Disney's back catalog is twenty good movies that most people already own on Blu-ray. I think a good yeah. amount of people do. Piping hot take. 20 good movies. <laughs> what, what Let that one sit for what a bit. <laughs> oh, God, no. That's going to take way too long. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I think I think it's about 20 good movies. And I kind of laughed at the idea. It's probably more now with the Marvel movies and stuff like that. But I'm just talking about Disney animated movies and Pixar. Star Wars? Rogue One sucked. It didn't suck. It was fine. Did you see Rogue We saw it together, right? Yeah, I saw it yeah. too. Yeah, it was fine. Not necessary, but fine. Very necessary. No, but now when they own 20th Century Fox and Fox Searchlight and that back catalog that Fox Ooh. has mixed with Disney, that will be by far superior than any other streaming service. That'll be a must-own. Also, Disney announced they're going to make three original movies on the streaming service a year. Oh, really? And they're going to have a couple new TV shows that they're going to have, which will probably be like the Marvel movies, the Marvel TV they'll shows. Probably, they'll probably bring um, Star Wars Rebels. Which is on Disney XD. We'll probably put that on on there or something of the sort. Yeah, and I mean, oh yeah, if you take what Fox has to offer, and you take what Disney has, yeah. and put all one streaming service, fifteen dollars a month is by far necessary. And I'll, I'll backtrack the way you're backtracking. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's going to suck is Disney's acquisition of FX, yeah. which makes some of the best shows on TV right now. If those get nerfed, dude, I'm going to be pissed. Cause Sunny, which is my favorite, yeah. My top three shows of all time. If that gets nervous, I'm going to be so upset. I really hope that either A, they just don't touch anything. Yeah. Or B, they just sell it off then maybe after a couple of years. I don't know. If they start, if they start nerfing shit, I, I'd, be, I'd be very upset. Yeah. Uh, I hope that they want to focus on maybe adult content with this the, 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 with the Fox. Yeah, this could be their avenue to get into more yeah. adult stuff. I really hope that's the move. Yeah. Um, I don't... My gut says it's not. Yeah, and that Fox Searchlight is probably just gonna get scrapped for its library and see you later. Yeah, which is very possible. Which is yeah, because they don't care about Mir- they didn't care about Miramax after the wine scenes left. Mm-hmm. So they put their faith in the right people. Am I right? <laughs> they get the job. They got the job done. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna go head over to see Murder on the Orient Express, and you'll hear our thoughts from that soon. All right, we are back. We just went and saw the first showing of the premiere, um, and the crowd was about what I expected, probably about 50 people there. I'd say about 50, yeah. Yeah. Um, nothing special. Not a huge turnout. I'll be interested to see how it does in the box office. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's get to the review. You can't handle the truth. She's gone from suck to blow. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? All right, we are back with the review. Uh, full disclosure, we recorded this yesterday directly after seeing the movie um but i'm an idiot and i forgot to turn the mic on so our takes will be less hot i think this time we've had some time to dwell on the movie and what we think about it um so just to start us off mike what did you think the story was uh so this is a based off a novel came in 1933 originally written by agatha christie agatha christie it's agatha christie novel and it follows uh kenneth brenna Kenneth Brenna as the uh, as this famous world-renowned detective, and basically through uh, matters of uh, great fortune, 
he happens to be on a train where a murder takes place, and he is the only person who can solve the mystery of the murder on the Oriental Express. That's pretty much it. As you, you said Oriental. Can you say Oriental? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that in post. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. I know. Um, yeah, it was bound to slip, but yeah. yeah. That's um, basically all I want to say. In, that's all you really can say. Yeah. Um, with the murder, murder mystery, mystery so. yeah. The more you say, the more you give away, and we don't want to spoil anything, anything for you. Just general thoughts. Did you like it? Not like it? At one point during the movie, I was like, this is fine. And then it slowly went on, and I said, wow, this is actually one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. But <laughs> but then... <laughs> oh, my God. But then by the end, I was like, okay, this is fine. It was okay, and it was just kind of fine. Yep, I'm the same way. Very middle of the road. Um, it sucks that we, that, that previous um, recording got deleted, because I'm, I've am i already forgotten this movie. Um, so I think our spoiler session will be uh, tough. Because I'm already forgetting characters and main yeah. plot points. Yeah. It won't be as good. That's just because of how bad this movie is. Yeah. Yeah. So out of 10, I would give this movie a 6.1. <laughs> <laughs> oh my And I knew God. it was going to upset you that I had gave it a point one, but Yep, I'm livid. It kind of makes sense <clears throat> in my, my world. All right. I'm going to go 5. 5. All right. That's fair. Uh, I should say that I gave this movie a 7. Yep, when right. we first recorded it, you gave it a hot 3.5 out of 5. And then we were doing the spoiler portion, and I was talking to myself at two, going, oh my god, this movie actually sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but 6.1 is still kind of high for a movie that yeah, sucks. Yeah, and, and I'll get into it in the spoiler section. There is things I liked about this. I might as well say it now. It was shot cool. Yeah, it was. The production design was, was, was really good. cool. Costumes were, were Costumes great. were good. Everything was good, but the actual plot. I agree. <laughs> but there was it was kind of funny, so... Yeah, there was some... Laugh out loud moments. It's um, hard for me to really, really like say this movie. Yeah, it was terrible. But it, it wasn't. Just seeing this movie, um, you could tell it would work way better as a book. Some characters, most characters, actually don't get much screen time at all, and they're not really fleshed out. It's the Kenneth Branagh show the entire way through. He of the two-hour runtime, he's on screen hour forty-five. Yeah, even when he's having one-on-one conversations, it's like the camera just sits on his yeah, face. He it's, loves it's it. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the answer to the mystery, I didn't like. I thought I was pretty weak. Are, are we getting to spoilers already or no? No. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I went in thinking that this was going to be like a, you know, your, your typical kind of murder mystery movie, and it really wasn't. Yeah. The, yeah. the way things get revealed isn't interesting. They, they, they come very easily to... The way they get clues yeah, are very interesting. Yeah. There's an absurd way he gets one clue there's that a, we'll get into later. He just cannot, yeah. Whatever. And then, yeah, there's... The finale is just that it all of a sudden just, it just happens. Yeah, and bad. looking back on it, I think I should have figured it out way sooner. And it's not to like the movie's credit that it was like, yeah, it was like hidden. It was just me being an idiot and being bored throughout the movie. It's all right. Yeah, if I if my brain was actually working, but I was yeah. just kind of like, all right, this movie needs to end. Yeah, yeah I was kind of sitting there mindless. So I'd go thumbs down. I give it a thumbs up, barely. Yeah, um, into a thread. I wouldn't recommend it to people. Um, I would not recommend it to anybody. If you were thinking about seeing this movie this weekend, just go watch a David Fincher movie. Um, he does this a thousand times better. Watch Gone Girl. Watch Seven. Watch Mindhunter, I'm sure. It's pretty good. Yeah, I've never seen Clue. I assume Clue's better than this. <laughs> go watch Clue. Go watch Clue. We were When we were actually going to the theater, we saw this extremely long line when we were walking up there going, oh my god, is this movie just going to sell out? Yeah, and I was we, we, we asked one of the guys what they were waiting for, and they said they were waiting for The Room. Yep. Which is uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room, yeah. which we should have watched instead. Yeah, we both walked out of the theater saying, "Yeah, we probably should have watched The Room instead." Yeah. I would not see this movie again. I'm happy to I saw it once. I'll gladly just skip it. Yeah, hey, I'll never watch anything. this movie again, and I'll yeah. probably forget what this movie's called in a couple years. So. You already did. You got it wrong. I did. That's true. Five, that just goes to show ago. you. I only saw it about 20 yeah. hours ago too, so that, that right. says something. So let's get into spoilers. Um, the big thing that the marketing was kind of deceiving with was how much Johnny Depp was in the movie. Mm -hmm. You thought he was the detective. I thought he was a detective, yes. He died. He's the one that dies. He gets murdered um, probably 45 minutes in. That's right, the 45 minutes. He's, uh, he's shown a few more times in flashback. But yeah, he's not in the movie much. And every character from Michelle Pfeiffer to Daisy Ridley to Josh Gad is in the movie for five minutes each, really. Some, some more than others. I think those three are probably in it the most of 
the yeah, supporting those characters. Those probably get eight minutes, and also whoever the Black Doctor is. Oh yeah, he's in it. He, he's, he's in about eight minutes too, and the, the other ones are in about three. But it averages out to about five. Yeah, there's two characters that I don't know even know why they're in the movie. It's the, the old gray guy and the automobile. Yeah, the, dude, the yeah, American. The old gray guy literally doesn't talk. Yeah, he's one of the twelve people, and he literally doesn't talk. And the guy that owns the three car dealerships was so odd. Yeah, I literally, I think he may have, may have had one line. They were they, both they so into the, the plot. Yeah. I guess they were there because you thought they could possibly be murdered. Not but, really. No, it was never going to be them. It would be like a really bad movie. It would yeah. really make no sense. It, was, it wasn't a great yeah. movie anyway. So. And it wasn't anything like, oh, you think it's this guy, and then twist, it's this person. You, there was never like a single person that you're like, oh, okay. I guess there is one moment. Yeah. When the when the when the doctor shoots Branna, you think okay he's it. Yeah, he's he's gonna be it. And then there's that weird ass hard cut, and the, Branna is healthily walking outside the train, and everyone's sitting at the table. Yeah, so Branna gets shot in the arm, yeah. and then this doctor literally grabs him by the throat, and he's holding his body off. He's the grabbing the throat, holding his head over the the bridge over yeah. the bridge that's yeah. overlooking this huge drop, and then it's a hard cut. Yeah, and he's just walking outside the train. I was like, what What the hell just happened? I mean, it, it makes no sense. And then all the all the 12 suspects are sitting like it's the fucking Last Supper. They were literally said the Last Supper, yeah. and there was 12 of them. 12 of them, yeah. But I, maybe in the book, there's some symbolism there. Outside of that, I don't see anything. There's nothing. I mean, you could say... It was kind of a cool shot, but... It was a cool shot. But... It ended there. Nothing. There's, there's no connection to Jesus yeah. in this movie, so... Yeah, so when it's revealed that all... Because slowly, over the course of the movie... Each person has a connection to a little girl that died like a year before or About something. About a year before, yeah. And d- during the that, movie, I'm like... That Johnny Depp killed. That Johnny Depp killed, right. Yeah, because he, he has a fake name, mm-hmm. and it's revealed who he actually is. Yeah, so it gets revealed how all these people are connected to this one girl. And I was like, oh my god, this is... How, how is that possible that all these people are on this train... I should have got it from that moment. The second I had that, thought I should have said. I and there was said, the oh, twelve stabs. There's twelve stab wounds. There's twelve people on the train. It, it's pretty clear. And I'm shocked it's, it took me that long. Yeah, they all they all had their heart broken by on this murder. Yeah. Things that transpired after that. I and mean, how do you feel about Branagh just letting him go? I kind of hated it. Yeah, I hate it too. Um, I kind of like the message behind this movie. How like. Um, you know how people say, like, pass uh, pass forward or whatever. You do something good, someone does something good for you. Pay it forward. Pay, for, pay it yeah. forward. This was kind of like the opposite. Someone does something bad to someone else, so, yeah. like, someone else gets killed. And yeah. It was kind of like this chain reaction based on one of Johnny Depp's murders. Mm-hmm. So I did like that. I thought that was cool. I never really thought about that. So that was a good meaning. So that kind of helped me like this movie a little bit more. But um, as far as letting them all go after we figure out they all did it, um, I guess I was okay with it. Just letting 12 people go, get away from the murder. Yeah, because Johnny Depp murdered a small girl. I guess, but, but Batman would, let, would never let that happen. Justice, no, and, think all justice, Mike. And this guy is kind of like a Batman figure, you know? He's like yeah. a, the, the world's greatest detective. The world's greatest detective, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, that's true. They kind of have a lot of similar similarities, yeah. actually. Yeah, if you want to see this movie, or you're interested in the story, I'd say probably read the book. Yeah, read the book. The book, I'm sure, is a lot better. Read the book, watch Clue. <laughs> you're really pushing for Clue, a movie you have never seen before. I've never before. seen it before, but I kind of really want to watch it now. Yeah, um, I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Do you have anything else to add? Um, I just want to say there was a couple. There was like three really cool shots I thought during the movie. At one point, there's the avalanche when they're on a train, which was kind of ridiculous. There's an avalanche when they're on a train, but the train gets knocked off the tracks, and yep. everyone kind of falls out of their rooms, and the camera's a little bit. The of... way the way they fall is kind of comical. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, so they they all fall out of the rooms and they all yeah all their heads are just barely laying on the yeah. door. But the camera is actually skewed for that whole entire yeah. scene. Then, so I thought that was cool. There was also during the murder, the shot was like above above the room, and then uh, Kenneth Branagh's character walked, and he's just walking through the train. Yeah. yeah, the camera remained above him, so it was like almost floating over rooms. I thought that shot was cool. And the shots I liked the most was when uh, Kenneth Branagh's character Branagh's character was uh, interrogating uh, each suspect. There was multiple windows on the uh, train where the camera was shot through, so the person that was getting interrogated, you could see three of their faces. Yeah, they could split. Yeah, yeah and I thought that symbolism there was, yeah, was, cool, was cool for the, the different tales you yeah, were telling. Yeah, the way they used the train as a set, was I think, was pretty neat. But other than that, I don't know how to give this movie too much credit. It's very average. Very, very average. I don't have anything else. I think they probably adapted it too close to the book. That was the issue here. You too kinda, many characters. Too many characters. <clears throat> there should have been like five stabs and really 
gone deep into each person. It's a bunch of A-list celebrities that yeah. just don't get It's insane a chance how good this cast is. It'll probably be the best cast of the year, but... Will um, Defoe, Will Defoe yeah. character literally makes zero sense to me. I was yeah. even thinking about that more later. He has a German accent, and then the detective calls him out for his fake German accent, so he starts talking on, on one word. And on he one drops word, it, yeah, because he's pronounced Turin wrong. Yeah, the city, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, he still is. He keeps lying. It doesn't really help anything. It was just yeah. dumb. That was dumb. So that's kind of yeah. that's all I have to say about this. Same, and since we recorded this. Um, Yesterday and it failed. There's some big news that came out in the last Huge 24 news. hours. Yeah, we thought um, we were gonna get away with uh, recording the news two days in advance, and yeah. then uh, Disney a bomb bombshell. So uh, Disney just announced that Ryan Johnson will be creating his own trilogy. Ryan Johnson is the director of Episode Eight. He did Looper, Brick, and The Brothers Bloom. Um, have you seen any of his other movies? I've not seen any of his other movies. Brick Brick is really good. I think Looper's Looper's solid too. So I mean, this is a huge compliment for episode eight. Yeah, that's the only thing. I, that's the only like positive thing I'm taking from this is that episode eight's gonna be awesome. Yeah, they must really love episode eight if they're gonna give him, I mean, this much room to work with. And from what I've heard of Ryan Johnson, and from what I've seen him do interviews and stuff like that, I do like him. So yeah. at least they're giving him the keys to this trilogy. Yeah. I don't want to see it at all, though. He, well, the good thing about this, I think, is confirmed they're moving away from the Skywalkers. So this can be all new territory. They can go. You don't like that? No, I I, I guess from that standpoint, it's cool. Yeah. Um, some people are saying it could be uh, the Old Republic, which I don't think you've played any of those games, have you? They're probably the best Star Wars games um, ever made, and really some of the best video games ever made. Um, I think if they went in that direction, that'd be really cool. Um, there's there's so much. The Star Wars universe is so big, and Disney has just been focusing on the same thirty years. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that they can take this in any direction they want with a guy they clearly trust and who's done a lot of great stuff. He's done some of the best Breaking Bad episodes like towards towards the end of it. So giving, I think they're giving the keys to the right guy here to do something new and innovative that they've been lacking a lot in the last, even in just the last two movies. You bring up an interesting point here because Disney spent four billion dollars on Star Wars, so they're yeah. going to do everything they possibly can to make as much money as they can. So at least they're giving us new content, yeah, new characters and new trilogy. Yeah, I mean there will be Star Wars until we die, so at least we can get us some variety. And yeah, it looks like it, this could be that. Yeah, you know what? You kind of you kind of sold me on. Uh, maybe this is actually kind of a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm done with the Skywalkers. <laughs> I mean, as, as a whole, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, yeah. so I, I don't want it to be Star Wars fatigue, and we're almost we're already gonna there. Get it. We're going to get it. Uh, Rogue One was so unnecessary, and mm -hmm. now this uh, this new Han Solo movie is the most unnecessary movie oh I can God, even think so of. so dumb. Um, they, they need to uh, spacey this one and just cancel the movie. That'd be ideal. Or, or in other news, Louis C.K. this one and cancel <laughs> the movie. What a segue. What a segue. <laughs> segue graphic! <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so Louis C.K.'s movie, I Love You, Daddy. Scrapped. Scrapped, which was comes out in a week from today. Comes out in a week. We are recording on uh, the 10th. Um, yeah, Scrapped, one week before it comes out. It is about a old movie director who falls in love with a young pre-minor so, girl. Have you seen Manhattan? No. Woody Allen's? No. Um, so this is basically making fun of Woody Allen's... Manhattan. Okay. Uh, in Manhattan, Woody Allen is about like a 55-year-old movie director. I think he's almost basically playing himself. And he falls in love with a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the same exact dynamics there, but J.K. Simmons is playing that girl's dad. J.K. Simmons. John Malkovich. <laughs> Sorry. Louis C.K. is oh. playing that girl's dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was shot in black and white. It was supposed to kind of like troll Woody Allen. And he would... Because I think, I think Louis C.K. was trying to like bring back up all the things Woody Allen's done in his past. Which is weird because for years Louis has been accused of sexual abuse too. Yeah. So for him to tackle the issue was a bold move smart. and it I, didn't work out at all. Hey, and the fact that you know, I wonder if there was different subject matter behind this movie, if they would let it go. Yeah. They wonder. probably wouldn't still, but the fact that it, the subject matter is sexual, yeah. you know. And I don't know. the studio that bought it misconduct is from Toronto Film Festival is Orchard. Or, or, Orchard? Orchard. I'm an idiot. And they're a pretty small company, and they spent like $5 million on this. So this was a huge investment for a small company, and they're not going to make any money on it. No. At least for the meantime. Too bad for them. That, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like every week we have more movies getting scrapped because of uh Hollywood bags. sins. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's getting all flushed out, and we can move on with our lives. Yeah. 
Oh, in addition to that Star Wars news also, um, they're going to make a Star Wars show for their new streaming service, which I kind of called even earlier this episode. I think I yep. brought up you something did. like that. Um, yeah, we were talking about the streaming service earlier, so yeah. once again, we're uh, on top of it. Any other news in the last... Uh, back to the streaming service, they're making a High School Musical. Oh, yeah, that's right. TV show for it, too, yeah. which... It's how, that sounds terrible, but... Uh, yeah, I have no interest in that. And, yeah, they said they're going to re- have, like, four TV shows when it starts. And it's coming out 2019 winter. So, like, this year, two years from now, it'll be out. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought it was going to be 2019, start of the year. No, no 2019 year, end of the year. And they still be significantly cheaper than Netflix. Really? Yep. I think this is Disney just going in Netflix's throat. Yeah. Just trying to kind of get them, get them out. Which Christopher uh, Nolan took a shot at Netflix. I you saw that. that, and then he, but he kind of he backtracked. Yeah. He emailed the guy, the CEO, and apologized for what, it. What exactly did he say? Do you remember? He just says Netflix is killing like the theater experience because he's a huge need to go see it in theaters guy. He, like Dunkirk, obviously. If I don't think that that movie plays as well on a TV. No, I, I yeah, I, I like Dunkirk, but I don't, I don't, I watch it on TV. I think I would, I wouldn't even enjoy it at all. Yeah, I think he like I think he he kind of brought the film back, probably. film back. Yeah, yeah. him and he loved uh, shooting on film like him and J.J. Abrams. They took a pledge to like Kodak that they would film every one of their movies on film now. Yeah, and I thought the new Star Wars it's Episode Seven compared to one through three, and you could tell that film oh, yeah. made that yeah hundred times better. So. Yeah, but I mean, you look at something like um, the Revenant that was shot digital. And that's probably the best looking movie in the last. I like, didn't know that was shot digital, and yeah, yeah that is like five years. beautiful, but it had literally the greatest cinematographer maybe of all time. Yeah, Emmanuel, in a ridiculous location. His name I can't think of his name. Yeah, in a ridiculous location, and and a terrific director. But yeah, seeing movies in seventy millimeters is not worth it. I can admit. Yeah, I've, it hasn't been for us yet. Yeah. I mean, I, Dunkirk was. I guess it probably looked better, but I, I can never tell. Emmanuel Lubensky. That's mm. the cinematographer. We won three three straight with uh, Revenant, Birdman, and Gravity. Oh, three yeah. straight Academy Awards. So can't touch Deacons though. Deacons hasn't won shit. He'll win this year. He'll win this year. It's Deacon. Uh, Deacons. Twenty forty nine. He, he does all of his movies, The Arrival, and all that stuff. No, he does. He's like he's with the Coens a lot. Okay. I think he's been nominated like fifteen times. Number, number one. one. I think I three were telling me that. Twenty forty nine, a good one. It's got to. I think it's the best shot movie I've seen so far this year. That or that or Dunkirk. Dunkirk's probably gonna win actually, now that I come to think God. of it. I don't like Dunkirk. <laughs> for, for the viewers. I wasn't a huge fan. But I enjoyed it, but I, I feel like the majority of people I've talked to actually didn't like it that yeah. much. But but that's we'll, for a different podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. Um, we'll wrap it up here. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at movie underscore rebrew. Follow me at Cash Money Keegan. Uh, visit our SoundCloud page, our YouTube page, and now we're on iTunes. Yes, we are. Uh, rate and subscribe. Leave a comment. Whoever left a comment last week, we appreciate it. <laughs> that was hysterical. <laughs> Very I, funny. I showed all my roommates everyone was dying. I had to guess it was, it was probably Liam. That's he awesome. might be on the uh, show next week. I think um, he will be, right? Yeah, he should be. Yeah, and if we're not, doing Justice League next week. Yeah, doing Justice League next week. Which uh, next week. is going to be terrible, but... Did you see uh, early reviews for it? I'm not. Positive? Positive, yeah. I don't think I'm going to like it, still. So. I don't think I will either. But we'll, we'll see. See you next week. We'll also be reviewing um, Ryan Guy's Truth IPA, maybe? Yeah, it's an IPA. IPA. Did you watch anything this week? I already talked about what we do in the shadows. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Yeah, which was awesome. I highly recommend it. Yep. I think everyone would like it. Mm-hmm. How about you? I'm slowly chugging along on uh, Death Note. I have five episodes left, so I'll probably cruise through that uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll give my review on that uh, next week. On the man's dollar. Yep. Any any movies, though? Um, Lady Bird? Yeah, this Dahmer. week I, I, I expect to see three movies. I probably won't see any of them, but <laughs> I mm-hmm. want to see Dahmer in theaters this week, The Florida Project, and Lady Bird. Yeah. And then along with Justice League, so I guess it'll be four. Yeah. And also, I am going to try to tackle Stranger Things. I'm going to try to start it start yeah. tomorrow. It's, and uh, it's all- eight hours, probably. Yeah. Quick, but you just you blow it through those. Hmm. Um, Train Spotting, I think, is in theaters at Gateway this week, which is my in my top five all time. I'll probably try to see that if I can. I think Rushmore is also Rushmore there also is, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, and I think Fight Club. I think all and Fight Club. This week, so. I've seen Fight Club like, probably like ten times, though, so I yeah, think I'm good I, on that. Yeah. We'll see. I, I hope I see one of those movies. Yeah, I gotta remember to buy those vouchers. Yeah. Um, you want to talk to them about the Untap? Yeah, uh, the app's called Untap, and we're gonna be on it now. If you want to follow us, it's movie underscore rebrew. And uh, Untap app is it's like a social media for uh, beer lovers. You can follow people, and you can um, <laughs> leave your review of uh, the beers that you had, and keep track of the beers. So, if you enjoy craft beers, you should download it and then follow us. 
because we'll uh, we'll post all of our reviews from uh, the podcast on there. So, hell of a pitch, and on the first try, way to go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks guys for listening. We'll uh, see you next week. Yeah, take care. I think I look retarded today. <laughs> oh no, I should have said that. <laughs> Uh, it's going at the end. That's a hot mic to uh to kill my senator's race later on in my life. Yep. <laughs>